Hello everyone! Today, I want to talk about painting the floor and shooting people behind walls. Okay, I promise this will be more interesting, and this will also allow me to have a bit of an add-on to the tri stringer video, because that sparked a bit of discussion, which very cool. But I don't think I communicated what I wanted to say on the long-range paint very well, so I think some of what I said has been misinterpreted, slash I could have said things better. I also want to talk about it, because there's a misconception about S-Blast that I want to talk about, and I heard people saying that BP would outclass Jet Sculpture, like the new one. None of that is really true, and I want to talk about all of it. So I'm going to cover it real quick. I'll try to go through this somewhat quickly. So let's start with paint, because paint's the most complicated thing here. Paint is way more than just we need more paint in a comp. I've seen this mistake quite a lot where I'll see people run like four short range guns and then they'll complain that like we have a lot of paint, but it feels like we can't move. Why is that? Like, why do we not have paint? And the reason is because you don't actually have good paint with four short range weapons. Like, good in the sense of a well-rounded sense. Let's talk about that. First off, effective painting range. Effective painting range is the distance at which you can safely paint an area. Obviously, Junior can be really good at painting your spawn, uncontested, probably the fastest and most efficient in the game. But, say you're painting a zone. There's going to be someone on the other team, on the other side of the zone, shooting back at you. You have to stand very close to the zone, and you have low fighting capabilities. So your effective painting range is really slow, or sorry, really small, and you have to worry about being rushed down. Even if we look at a weapon like Zap, for example. Zap might paint a little bit worse than Junior, output-wise. But it's going to be way safer when painting because it can paint a little bit further away and it has better fighting power so it's harder to rush down. If we extend this we can get to mid-range shooters. 96 would probably be one of the most common examples here. 96 doesn't paint as well mainly because of its strafe speed and its ink efficiency. It has more downtime. You can see half my tank was chugged just painting this small area that barely make a dent in Junior. The difference is I can paint way further than Junior ever could and therefore way safer. Obviously, there's some exceptions with these, but they all come with trade-offs. For example, Nova can paint pretty close to that distance and better, especially with painting tech, and it has better ink efficiency, even if not as good as short range, but it comes with, you know, five-shot RNG Nova. This thing is a long junior, right? So you're trading off a lot of, can you paint while being able to fight? Can you paint while being able to do things? How safe can you paint? That kind of thing all matters. When we get into back lines, it becomes even more extreme. But before we get there, I want to talk about burst paint real quick, because that is something like Big Swig Explo and Dynamo are good at. Burst paint is the ability to have like a bunch of air paint hit the floor at the same time. This can also come with some benefits like for Explo. You can have two things hit the floor at the same time. You know, if you're trying to cap a small zone, for example, of Explo, you can do this and probably flip it. This is also what Big Swig likes to do on Flounder Zones. It'll insta-flip the zone and make it really hard for the enemy team to paint it because rather than paint slowly filling it, it paints it in a burst. This is also something that other weapons have access to in smaller forms via bombs, you know? Like Junior will throw a bomb on the other side of zone, paint, and then the burst paint from that bomb might flip a zone. That's another notable factor, just kind of its own thing. Let's get to long distance paint. First, before we get to the Tri-Stringer stuff, V-Jet versus Ballpoint. Right. The reason I don't think VJet and Ballpoint will outclass each other, despite being very, very similar weapons, is painting range. When VJet is farming its vacuum, it paints like this. Right. It paints far away, and you can see it paints quite well in between, especially if I were, like, paint down and up a little bit, you know. This is very strong distance paint. This paints very effectively at that range. Whereas Ballpoint, on the other hand, doesn't really paint like that. You'll notice Ballpoint Long Range Mode has extremely bad paint output. Even the strafe speed you can see is much lower than V-Jet. And despite me strafing slower through the area, there's practically nothing hitting the floor. Ballpoint doesn't paint like that. Ballpoint paints like this. Obviously, if you're really close to your jetpack, you can use the long range paint to help get it. But if you are charging one from scratch, you're doing it like this or like this. That's probably why Fizzy is good on it. So they have very different use cases. If you want long distance paint, then V-Jet's much better at it. And in fact, that segues into why long range paint is really good. Let's talk about Snipe Rider. I think Snipe Rider is a candidate for one of the best effective painting weapons in the entire game. 
Currently, this is the best weapon to pair with Range Blaster right now. We've seen an area comp cup comp with it, which I'm going to try, which is Double Splash, Snipe Rider, and Range Blaster, like a month back or so. Why is Snipe Rider, a Charger, something infamously bad with Blasters, good for it? I mean, obviously it has, you know, combo damage number is very nice. But the main thing is Snipe Rider is really good at getting a range in. Say you're a Range Blaster somewhat near me or under me or something, and you want to push forward. I'm shooting at someone, having Charger Pressure. Meanwhile, five solid lines hit the floor and the range player is just going. Like, they don't even have to shoot their way in. They just swim, jump, and shoot. Like, if I'm a range, I don't have to jump, shoot, swim, and go in. Like, I just go. It, it cuts down all in between time. You know, and it's comboing off people, and it's shooting at someone with 68 damage with the ability to kill them, and then it's throwing out coolers. And it has sprinkler, so it's got nice passive paint. For as much crap as sprinkler get- Oh, I grabbed the cooler. I can't open the menu for 17 seconds. All right, I guess I'll talk about this. For as much crap as sprinkler gets, which, trust me, it deserves a lot of it, I don't think people realize that this tends to be pretty effective on weapons like this, on backline weapons that want to focus on the main gun. Stuff like Snipe Rider, stuff like Splatlings, and even stuff like Stringers to some extent, mostly want to be shooting their main gun. They don't really have a point where they're too far away to affect people or need tools to get in. Having something that can cover with paint and be a deployable is pretty useful on it. I mean, it's on Snipe Rider, which has been good in the meta, and it's been on Heavy, which has also been good in the meta. It's been on two backline weapons that have been staples of the meta at one point or another in this game. Not saying it's amazing, but I'm saying that kind of extra pain output is pretty valuable for this kind of role. Anyway, let's get to Tri-Stringer. So, I will be fair and say that I did not label Tri-Stringer's paint correctly, and I kind of was poor with what I was saying it. It's not just that Tri-Stringer can struggle, like, obviously the charger lines are thicker if you paint like this, but yes, I know Tri-Stringer can do like this and paint better this way, and obviously I'm doing this much more poorly than an actual experienced Tri-Stringer main. The problem is this still is not a way to get weapons in that don't paint effectively for themselves. Like, think about it. If you're doing this kind of paint thing, you know, I feel bad with how poorly I'm doing it, but even if you're doing something like this with this trail, this doesn't appear instantly or even somewhat close, you know? And on top of that, if you're focusing on painting, you're taking more time to tap shot the floor near you than charging your next shot. Like, if I'm focusing on AOEing at a distance, that's a bit different, you know? This is also what stuff like Heavy does. Heavy is very similar to uh, V-Jet, except a little bit faster at times when it's shooting, you know, but more damage, to where it's strafing and moving around quite quickly as it's shooting and firing and going in. This is part of why Spallings are so nice with blasters. They're very self-sufficient. They're not just painting for them, but they're also something that can deal with it properly. Where Tri-Stringer has that positive is the ability to also do area of effect damage, which I think is really important, you know? Like, Sniper Rider still has the threat of long-distance shots, this thing does too, but it can potentially one-shot. Like, that's really cool. And it's got AoE. That stuff is very valuable, and I don't want to discredit the weapon for that. But that's part of why I look at something like the new kid and think it's effective, especially because of Super Chump. And to cover it even further, Super Chump does the same thing. I just talked about how it could be difficult for something like a blaster or, say, a bucket would probably be even better with Tri-Stringer, given the 70 damage, to be able to get in. One thing Super Chump does very well is has immediate burst paint. Let's say you chump here and then you paint a little bit for your Tri-Stringer, like Tri-Stringer paints like this, and your blaster just goes, and there's just paint here. And then if the chumps are ignored, they paint again, and they meet shield. Chumps are nice because they bridge the gap. It's not just that they paint more as a whole, which is kind of what I said in the video, but it's also that they serve as this entry. They paint the part that Tri-Stringer struggles the most at. The further away you get, the less effective Tri-Stringer can paint. Chumps solve that. Chumps bridge that gap while also working well with those weapons and working well with Tri-Stringer. I'll also note from talking with Mbound, actual Stringer player, that I do know a lot of Vivo players will still enjoy the regular kit due to the ability to do faster chip damage to be a bit more self-sufficient with the whale. Totally understand that. I think that's a valid reason to prefer the first kit. Again, I'm not a Tri-Stringer player, and Tri-Stringer players are welcome to correct me for this information. But what I will say is I firmly believe that this weapon plays very well with stuff like buckets and blasters and other area of effect weapons. And as someone who plays those weapons, who has been doing comps for those weapons for most of the game's life for multiple Splatoon games, 
I happen to know pretty well what kind of stuff works well with those weapons. And so when I recommend stuff like that new kit, a lot of it was in the basis of, I think this weapon needs those comps to succeed. And that's the kit that those kind of comps would want. Anyway, we're also talking about AoE, so we're not done with Stringer here. I would like to classify AoE into three different categories. You have close range AoE, long, and then you have blast radius size and long range AoE. Try Stringer is cool because it could do all three. And in fact, not only could do it all three, it technically has the most amount of damage with AoE in the game because it could do 90. I keep hitting the target, but it can do 90 damage with the three explosions. This is important because you want to think about what kind of area of effects weapon you want in your comp. This is what a lot of people get wrong with S-Blast. You don't pick S-Blast for the long range AoE. It's long range AoE is very mediocre. It's still there, it's still effective. Like compared to a Squiffer, if I slightly miss the target, I'm still doing 70 to 50 damage. There can still be combos with it. Having that in your comp is important, but you're not picking it for that. You can't see a guy behind a corner and then try to shoot him with an S-Blast. Like you can maybe hit him, but it's not reliable. This isn't going to securely kill people. Whereas if I pick a range blaster, on the other hand, with an almost double blast radius size, then yeah, all of a sudden the shot becomes a lot easier, becomes a lot more feasible to do. For short range AoE weapons, it depends on the position you want. Short range AoE weapons can play a bit different positions than long range ones. For example, if I want to stay under this ledge and poke people above, as a range blaster, I'm a lot more in cover. Whereas if I were to pick, back to S-Blast for our example, I can stay behind this wall and hit things much more effectively from down here. So short range AoE is on maps where you want to have that kind of close range cover and have area of effect to check shorter range weapons, stuff like shooters. Short range shooters are very, have a very hard time dealing with stuff like this. Another one would be like small umbrellas. All of those are important to note. So in picking area of effect, you have to really think what you want, you know? Nautilus struggles against AoE, but it doesn't struggle against this AoE. It struggles against this AoE. You can't pick like a Tri or an S-Blast or a Luna to counter a Nautilus, even though those are area of effect weapons and area of effect is good into not. This is the area of effect that's good into it. It's in the same way of, okay, yeah, you want paint, but what type of paint do you want? Depending on your comp, a Ballpoint Nouveau or a V-Jet might be different for which one is better, depending on what you have. If you have three other weapons that paint up close... Maybe the Ballpoint Nouveau with no Fizzy Bomb to paint at a difference at a distance might not actually be the better pick than the Jet Squelcher. All of those are factors to keep in mind, and so I'm just trying to point out the differences between these. So when you think about AoE and paint you want in your comp, get a bit more specific. What exactly do you want from that paint and area of effect? That's important to note when building teams. Thanks for watching.